So in this tutorial, I'm gonna solve problems from section 14.2, uh, which is basically double integrals in, in Cartesian. So the question looks pretty much like that. You have a function of two variables, y root x and dy dx, and you have limits of integrals, but it's not clear those limits are for which one. So the rule here is that the integral, um, the far end is for the far end, so this one is for the far one, which is dx, so it's between, so I would like to write it more clearly like that. So the limit of the integral here is for y, and this is integral for x. So how do you solve a problem like that? We just separate it. So like that, we just assume that we have only the problem in the middle between the, the uh, red brackets, and we start solving it as a normal problem. Um, now we have x x is considered considered a constant here um, so you integrate with respect to y um, and you can because x is constant at that moment at the moment we are between those red brackets we could just take it outside like that and once you take it outside i think this integral is pretty clear you just integrate with respect to y um, you will end up with y squared over 2 and then substitute your limits of y. Also see how I like to write y equal 1 and y equal 4 just to make it clear because sometimes people would like substitute an x instead of y. And then after that you get your new expression which will include only x and then you have a normal integral integrate with respect to x uh, this integral equal to this and then substitute the limits of x and again, but here it's not really important because you don't have y anymore, you just have x. So it's pretty clear, pretty clear that you're going to just substitute for x. So this is how you do double integrals. But this is only a simple question. So let's just take a couple of notes here. So when I said this was the question here, when I said that, this was equivalent to me saying that, okay, find this integral over this area. Okay, so the integral over this area r. Okay, and da and then i say that we where r is equal to um, a point x and y where y is between one and four and x is between zero and two this is exactly the same as just so if you get a question like that you are supposed to get those to put them in the limits of the integral and then da is equal to dy dx when we are speaking cartesian uh, then also there's another note that also here because our limits of integral here is only numbers, which is pretty easy, which we did. Um, we can always switch between them. It's called Fubini theorem. So you can switch between this and that. So what, we, what I did here is that dy, dx, I switched them. And also I switched the integrals. And if you do it step by step, you're going to end up with exactly the same answer. Maybe you're going to start by y being constant and then degrading the x with respect to x and so on and so forth. Um, let's just move it to, an, to a new question where it's a little bit more challenging. So here, see the question here is given with the other way, where you're given integrate over this region, where the region is um, y is between 0 and pi over 2, and x is between 0 and sine y. So here, um, I, write, I wrote the integral as this way, so the integral of the function that was given, nothing, I didn't change anything here. I only changed dA to be dx dy, and I changed the r to put the limits that were given here. But why did I choose to start by x, not by y? Because let's say you start by y, so this integral will go here, and then you will start integrating with respect to y, but you have something here with respect to y. So you can't really integrate, we don't really have rules for integrating or at least we do not know rules for integrating um, an integral that have a variable in the integral limits. So what we start, what we, what we try to do always is that we start by uh, limits of integral that, so x here is the limit, so x equals 0 and x equals something. Um, so, but here there's no x and this lim and those limits, right? So it's okay to integrate with respect to x. But if I did the opposite way around, I'm integrating with respect to y, but in the same time I have y in the integral, in the other integral, then this is going to cause problems. So this is why we start this way. So we start by this way, integrate with respect to y, and remember also that uh, x 
uh, with, with sorry, we'll, we'll start with with respect to x, uh, and then um, remember that cos y is now constant because between those red brackets, again, I'm just using those red brackets all the time. Uh, between those red brackets, we consider y as a constant. So this integral is completely fine because we have limits of constant. We have um, we can take the constant outside like this, and then we have an integral of x with those limits, you just do the integral easily, it's x squared over 2, substitute your limits here and here, and then you end up with a new integral, so the integral will be after you substitute, uh, will be the integral, this is a, a normal integral, just cos and sine uh, dy, um, you don't have x's anymore, realize, so uh, what you need to do is that you need to do u substitution, so u equals sine y, du by dy is equal to cos y and dy is equal to du over cos y and also the limits you have to change the limits of the integral in terms of u so your limits will be u equals 0 and u equal 1 and then plug it in back and the equation you will have after you do your simplification you'll end up with the integral of u squared du from 0 to 1 multiplied by half do your integral substitute values you'll end up with this value so pretty much what you need to do is just it's this is all this is all calc 1 you, you know you know those stuff from before but what you need to do is just construct your your integral from the beginning in the right way as in here start by the right variable don't start by it don't leave a variable in the outside integral that is actually a variable inside this integral and start integrating because this really doesn't work. Okay, so let's move to another. Um, so yeah, in this example, we integrated first with respect to x. This is what we did. And we refer to this case as, as being x simple. Um, but now let's look at an, an example that you actually can change. But once you change, you can keep the integrals as they. You, you, will, you will understand this more as we see the, the next uh, example. So here's the example. It says evaluate by reversing the order of integration. So remember, I just said that you can't, but now it's asking you to do that. So it's saying reverse. So put this integral uh, to be the outer integral and this one to be the inner. But now d um, y will be a variable outside and the limits of the integral outside. And then the integral, this one will go inside. And then I will integrate with respect to y while we have y as a variable in the integral in the outer integral so what we do is that we have to first start by sketching this um, this variable so remember this is exactly equivalent to saying okay do this integral over the region where x is between 2y so x is between x equal 2y so here's x equal 2y and x equal 2 so this is the blue line here as x equal 2y and the purple line here is x equal 2. So I'm saying integrate from here to here. And then after that, I'm going to integrate from y equals 0 to y equal 1. So this is equivalent to me to, to if you want to vi visualize it. So we have this small box here is actually dx dA, which we refer to d area dA. So dx dy, um, we integrate first with respect in this example here, we integrate first with, this, with respect to x. So we are going from here, from x equal 2y to x equal 2. So we end up with this slice. And then after that, you integrate with respect to y from y equals 0, the red line, to y equal 1, the green line. So you have the whole area. And then also it's multiplied by this function. So it gives you a volume. But this is not the story. So now what we want to do is we want to do the opposite. And there is a reason why they're selling, telling you to reverse the order. Because if you look at this and you want to integrate this with respect to x, it's not really easy because if you remember e to the power of negative x squared, you need to use u substitution. And usually you need to have an x multiplied here to be able to do that. So this is why we're trying to reverse because sometimes it's easier to evaluate the integral this way. So what we do is that instead we start by having our dx dy then integrate with respect to y first, okay, so we get a slice this way, so we start from y equals 0 to y equal x over 2, and remember this is the same as, it's not different than saying x equal 2a, it's the 2y, this is the same line, I didn't change the line, I just 
took the 2 to the other side, divided by 2, 2 sides, and I got y equal x over 2. So I got this slice here, and then I integrate with respect to x, so I get the whole area. So x will be here from 0 to 2, because I'm going to have this here, and I'm going to have similar slices like it next to each other, and I'm going to sum them together. So basically, I'm going to write like that. Uh, the integral of the same function, I didn't change it. I changed dy and dx, but I had to change the, the, the actual limits, but I didn't change them like randomly. I actually draw the diagram and then I said, okay, let's start by y first, and I'm going to take from y equals zero, the red line, to y equal x over two, which is the blue line, and then sum it, sum this again. So after I give the slice and integrate, into, sum it from x to x, from x equals zero, here, this line, to x equal 2, this line. So this is what I did here. This is my integral. And this is this becomes like a normal problem after that. Remember that between the red brackets, we have, um, we have, um, we consider x to be constant, right? So e to the power of negative x squared could be considered constant. So all we, what we have is the integral will give you y e to the power of negative x squared and then substitute from what from y equals 0 to y equal x over 2. Uh, after you do this substitution, you're going to end up with this integral. And this integral is um, pretty easy. If you remember calc 1, you just uh, substitute u equal to the power of negative x squared. After you do your substitution, I didn't show the steps here. Um, you just end up with this integral, and then after you evaluate the integral, you just find this result. So pretty much the idea here is to sketch your, is to sketch your area, and after you sketch your area, you try to see what is the pattern that is being used, which is this one, and then change it to the other pattern. So start from by the other, but you can just flip. You can just reverse. Like okay, let's make it. Uh, so you, you realize here it's x equal 2, y x equal 2, uh, and uh, y equals 0, y equal 1. I did not just reverse it and keep it y equal 0, y equal 1 as in here, and x equal 2, y, and x equal 2 as in, a, as in here. You have to change it this way to avoid the fact that we said that uh, you can't have uh, an integral that has a variable in the outer uh, integral and still do the integral, the inner integral. 